Hello and welcome to Euroactive's EU Tweets of the Week. Euro football final ends in a fray. Fit for 55, will Ursula get her way? And the European Commission's cheery greeting is a total cliché. This week, we are supported by our own Euroactive EU services. More about the marketplace later on. It's the last tweets of the week for this season and also the last time I'll bang on about football for a while as last Sunday was the final of the Euros. But what a final, from a goal in the opening minutes to nail-biting extra time and all the way to penalties. No one could accuse it of being boring. In the end, England lost to Italy on penalties, which is a cruel way to go out. But the Italian Post had this response, while Apollo X Sports reminded us that all roads lead to Rome. Others pointed out that despite losing, the England team had acquitted themselves well. Marcus Rashford might have missed a penalty, but he is a wonderful footballer and all-round decent human on and off the field, tweeted Irish politician Maurice Quinlevin. Sadly, the same cannot be said for the England fans who went on a violent rampage following the match. Some even tried to snatch the flag of the Bulgarian embassy in London because it has the same colours as the Italian flag. Yeah, well done, lads. Three of the players came in for horrible racist abuse online and UEFA have even opened an investigation. But in Anna Milosevic's village in Calabria, there are 4,500 Italians and one Englishman. Flags on balconies? Check. Sunday mass on loudspeakers? Check. Stadium horns and megaphones tested every hour? Check. But no one will go knocking on John's door and no flags will be burned, she said. We love our neighbour. I think I speak for us all when I say, can we see a photo of John? From controversy on the pitch to controversy inside the European Commission, as a squadron of commissioners lined up to present Fit for 55. Anna Gumbau helpfully shared the Fit for 55 bingo. All legislative files are connected is my personal favourite. So how did it turn out? Well, Le Chou joked that EU commissioners took so long discussing Fit for 55 that youthful millennial Virginia Sienkiewicz hits his late 50s. Well, sometimes satire really is too close to the truth. Apparently, around a third of commissioners expressed concerns. There's a general feeling of frustration about how President von der Leyen handled one of the main initiatives of her mandate. Was this setup really necessary? Asked Valentina Pop. Ursula von der Leyen and six of her commissioners, it felt more like a Brussels Got Talent show than a news conference on an important set of policy proposals. But the rule remains, said Leonor Hubo. The more people on the podium, the less important the proposal. Not much was announced. To really understand, let's read the actual documents. Meanwhile, to answer a question nobody's asking, Fit for 55 package is 3,795 pages long. If you think Fit for 55 is unambitious now, just think what it'll look like after the German lobbyists have cast their beady eyes over it, snarked Martini Selzemeyer. And Greta Thunberg was seriously unconvinced. Unless the EU tear up their new Fit for 55 package, the world will not stand a chance of staying below 1.5 degrees of global heating. Mind the gap between words and action. But I think we can all agree there are some goals worth aiming for. Yeah, you really cannot unsee that. This episode is sponsored by our own Euroactive EU services. If you're looking for service providers for your projects, participants for your events, consultants or freelancers, head over to Euroactive's new EU services online marketplace, which helps connect EU professionals and publish your first call. Finally this week, Wednesday was Bastille Day and the European Commission attempted to wish France bon fête nationale à tous, but it somewhat backfired. How to say you're looking for a graphic designer without saying that you're looking for a graphic designer, snarked one tweeter. To be fair, look at the state of the Photoshop on that. Oh no, not the Europe of cliches, begged Francois Baudonnet. Catherine C. thought it an interesting choice of illustration, just missing the beret and Doisneau's little cycling guy on his bicycle. Looks like DG cliché is alive and well. That's it for this week and indeed for this season, but we'll be back in September casting another sidelong glance at the fights and delights of the Brussels bubble. Mm -hmm.